Hey guys, it's Testosterone RN, and uh, today I'm going to try out a theory of mine uh, about a fire pit. And I've seen some of these underground fire pits uh, briefly, a couple of them online and stuff like that. Um, mine's going to be different though. I haven't seen anyone try this yet. It's going to be based off of uh, some physics that I learned while I was a jet engine mechanic in the Navy. Now, as you can imagine, a jet engine is just a solid tube, right? And you have an opening on one end and an opening on the other. So, how do you keep the combustion? only going one way right, instead of coming back out the intake and that's what I'm going to attempt to do here is create an underground fire that blasts heat towards where you're sleeping so that way you don't have all the light from the fire in the environment if you don't if you want to kind of stay discreet and you're just channeling that heat and just pushing that like a furnace towards where you're sleeping now, the, the principle and the theory I'm going to be using theorem which is convergent and divergent ducts right and it deals with pressure gradients so you have a pressure on one side that's higher on the other that keeps uh, the flow from backtracking from coming back where you don't want it to go so in an aircraft right you're flying and you're forcing air into your intake well our fire isn't gonna be flying so I need to face my intake for my fire into the wind uh, which is pretty much prevailing out of the south southwest um, and then come up with a way to direct that heat from the fire into where my camp would be. Um, the benefits of having an underground fire are, number one, it's discreet. Uh, you don't have to worry about your light being visible. Two, it protects it from the elements more. So if it was to rain or snow or something like that, it might not um, affect it as much. Um, it might not always be the ideal. to use uh, it probably is going to take a lot of energy and time but if you know you're stuck in an area for a while or you're going to be camping in an area for a while it might be beneficial anyhow like i said it's just a theory and we're going to test it out Okay, so I finished this uh, underground fire pit stove. Uh, I told, told you it was uh, utilizing convergent and divergent ducts, which is uh, Bernoulli's principle. Um, there's a lot of physics going on at work here. Uh, before I explain that, I just want to kind of show you a few of the tools I used. So one of the big ones I used was this uh, Tom Brown Tracker T3, made by Topps Knives, made in the USA. It is awesome, amazing. It's got a good heft to it, so I was able to chop through limbs and shape them and uh, shave them down to make stakes and all that good stuff. It's pretty nice how it just fits right there. And I also use this um, German military trifold. Um, pretty awesome. Really heavy duty. I actually uh, tried a USA made trifold as well and I actually like the German trifold better. I think it's got a few differences that make it a little bit sturdier um, and uh, not susceptible to wear as much. So I like that and it helps a lot. And I wanted to use something that I, you know, going to carry on me if I'm out in the bush or whatever. Um, 
camping or hunting or whatever so that's why I use these two items um, okay so this right here is a fire pit um, and I'll go ahead and explain to you exactly how it works all right so the first thing I did and I have the pictures I'll uh, put in the video too so you can see the steps is I just dug out a smaller inlet here all right and the, the this is the convergent duct, so it kind of is smaller, but it still converges and it becomes narrower as it goes in. So you can see the shape of this mound right here kind of widens and goes narrower. It's narrow right here. Okay, so this is the convergent part. I dug this out with a trifold, <coughs> which is uh, available for sale at blackwoodcurriesurvival.com. I dug that out and I started tunneling underground because right, I wanted to kind of make like a, a pipe underneath, so to speak, a cylinder or a void. And then I came over to this side, and right here, this is the divergent duct. So it's diverting, and it's expanding. All right, we got the air coming from the south, southwest. I pointed this that direction on purpose to get the airflow, kind of like a jet engine. Press that air as it's funneling in, it's converging, which is making the velocity of the air increase. All right, then it's going to hit this area right here, which is basically the combustion chamber slash diffuser, like you would have on a jet engine. It's not as elaborate as a jet engine, obviously. This is bushcraft here. Okay, just trying this theory out, and seeing if it works. And so what's going to happen is. It's I got my fuel source in there, which isn't a whole lot. I want this to be efficient, all right? And it's burning, the combustion process is going on, and as this air is funneling in, it's pushing it through, and it's diverting it. So you have high velocity on this side, low velocity on, on this side, okay, and high pressure here. And what's happening is we're basically keeping the airflow directional, again, in theory, we're gonna see how it works out in real life. But, um, so it's gonna force all the heat out this way, hopefully. All right, this side's a lot bigger, uh, wider and deeper. And the reason I have these mounds is kind of to keep that duct um, dimensional shape instead of just having two open pits. It'll help keep true, I think, more to the physics of what I'm trying to create here. Additionally, uh, I took some uh, boughs for some mesquite trees and I use this uh, Tom Brown tractor T3 just kind of hack those off the trees and sharpen them up and that Tom Brown T3 tractor is uh, on BlackMcCraySurvival.com also. It's an awesome tool. And so then I sharpen the ends like stakes and I kind of stick one on the ground, curved it in and made a dome and then kind of weave some more in and then put all my soil that I dug out back on top. It took me about two and a half hours um, taking my time. Uh, so as far as utilizing energy up front, not very efficient, but I think on the back end is where you're gonna gain the most from it. Let's see what else. Additionally, so what this is also gonna do, um, on a traditional fire, right, you have 360 degrees and it's just radiating out 360 degrees. Well. I'm not 360 degrees around the fire. I'm on one side and I want to be able to get all the benefit from that heat if I'm in a survival situation. So I want it to blow out on me. So basically I'm making kind of like a blast furnace, so to speak. So in my situation, I would be camping right here or sleeping right here and letting all that hot air just wash over me coming out the end of this uh, divergent duct here. Um, this is going to protect it from rain to a degree. So that way I don't have to worry about rains or anything putting my fire out um, it's gonna make it more discreet so you know if I don't want to be seen um, it's more discreet like that I think you know where's the other benefits to this um, if you're gonna be in an area longer you don't have to go hunting for fuel as much uh, because you're not using gargantuan amounts of fuel you can put a small amount of wood in there here, again in theory, and burn it, but have it funnel directly where I want it to go. 
So uh, I guess we'll see how it works and I'll let you know. All right, I'm about ready to lap this bad boy up. Um, I got a bunch of uh, tinder and stuff in there, some smaller twigs, some skeet, and oak, uh, cedar elm. And I got my ferro rod. Uh, it's got a nice polymer handle on it. And the striker's actually built into the handle, which makes it pretty unique. And it's kind of uh, cupped. So it directs the sparks uh, on the striker. I like that a lot. BlackwindPraiseSurvival.com where you can find this. So you kind of just use the end on this lanyard to push the striker out of the handle. So you have the striker here. Let me see if I can flat this up. Got some pretty dry stuff in here. Well, so far the smoke's only coming out one side. It's not coming back out this way. That heat is just coming out of there. You can see no smoke's coming out the back side. The fire's right there in the middle. And it's being forced out the end. So it looks like it's working. Okay, so right now I'm about five feet away. Ish, and I can feel that just all the running with me is, it is warm and toasty and a hot son of a gun. So I think, you know, some modifications. It's going to be even more efficient. efficient. So thank you for the black video. I hope you found it interesting. Remember, you can find the tools that I used to the, the Tombound tracker. Uh, polymer handle ferro rod. You can find those on BlackmanPrairieSurvival.com. There's a lot of good stuff on there. A lot of American made products too. Uh, like I said, this is American made. And uh, this ferro rod, that's made in America also. And there's a larger one for sale on there. And there's also one with a tinder capsule on the end to hold dry tinder in all the time. So check it out. I think you'll like it.